Y'all, I have pandemic hair. I swear to you, I'm, I'm going to take the hair down. It's going to probably be the intro to the video. I don't know. But I'm just going to show you. Caitlin, I need you. <laughs> as soon as we're all vaccinated, <laughs> you got to come fix my hair. But look, I've got like a little pin back here holding back my hair. Because, y'all, this is... Ooh. Mufasa on a bad hair day. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Caitlin, you need to save my hair. Well, after that intro, I don't know what to do, right? <laughs> Got my hair back up. Uh, it's it's in it's done up with, you know, a paintbrush and a chopstick. I think that yeah, a chopstick. So, you know, but I got crazy hair, right? It just is what it is. I was on my love, please. It's been, I think, about a week since I put up a video. I apologize for that. Like I say, almost every other video, um, I do have a chronic illness, and it just influences what I can do sometimes. And unfortunately, it was the bare minimum. <laughs> like, that's all I can do was bare minimum. For those that don't know me, I am an actual teacher. I, I teach high school English um, and journalism. So, eh, yearbook. <laughs> I have a yearbook advisor, and you can imagine what kind of stress that is. Um, but, after watching my videos, I'm sure that doesn't come to a surprise that I'm a teacher and that I have kiddos, because that's what I call you guys that, you know, that watch this video. My kiddos, my lovelies, right? Well, I did a video, the last video I did, was talking about different stories for my students, and I'd like to share more of those. I had some more write in and give me permission to use their stories. So this one is kind of about bullying. All right. And I know that probably people might be a little desensitized because bullying has been brought up so much lately. Don't don't get desensitized to bullying. That's that's not how we want our future to look, right? We do a bully lesson here in the district that I work for every year. And every year, my kiddos can tell you, I break down in tears every time. Why? Because I still remember my bully by name. Because this is public, I will do her a favor and I won't name her. But she made my life a living hell when I was younger. So much so that I hated recess. I'd go hide. Um, a lot of my insecurities regarding people were because of her. Now you want to know what I got bullied for? Because I had epilepsy. I've always been chronically ill. That's what chronically ill means. <laughs> I've always been chronically ill. When I was a child, when I was younger, um, before the age of 13, I kind of outgrew epilepsy. But when I was younger, I would have grand mal seizures and petty mal seizures, petty mal seizures every day. Every day I was having a petty mal seizure. And for me, it was just kind of like I would be talking and all of a sudden I'd stop talking. Well, this, this girl, for whatever reason, decided that I should be picked on for it. I was so bullied about that fact that I actually wrote a book when I was in fourth grade called The Friendly Little Manatee. Uh, the Friendly Little Manatee was about a manatee who had seizures and people picked on him for it. And he found a friend because I desperately just wanted a friend. That's it. So you can understand growing up that way and then also being spooky, which makes me different. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm always the kind of little spooky person here, which also makes me different. Um, I grew up, like I've said in previous videos, with without having a teacher to attach myself to. There wasn't, there wasn't somebody there for me. So bullying happened quite a bit for me. I didn't have someone to stand up and say, nope, that one's mine. You can't, you can't pick on that one. That one's mine, right? I didn't have that. 
And when I got into teaching, I absolutely swore that I wasn't going to let any child feel like they didn't have a home. We talked about that in the Outcast video. We talked about that. I had been not keeping something a secret, but not like being public with something as well. It was really none of anybody's business. And honestly, it doesn't have any factoring on me as a teacher or me as an employee. It really had no bearing whatsoever. But I also kept it a secret because I knew what kind of county I lived in. And I knew what kind of state I live in. And that some people might have a problem with it. So I kept a secret for many, many, many years that I'm pagan. I'm not Christian. I'm pagan. Um, I actually, the label I prefer is witch. I'm a witch. Um, are you a good witch? Are you a bad witch? I'm neither. <laughs> um, so what finally got me to come out and be like, <clears throat> this is who I am and not, not hide it anymore was a set of twins. I finally got to have these twins in my class their senior year. And because of their story, I became a better teacher. I became a better person. I became a stronger person. So Lilith and Gwyneth, I love you girls for it. And you know that. See, they had been picked on for what I was afraid I was going to get picked on. They were open about it. It was fine right? It's the way their family was brought up, to my understanding. So when they were open and honest about it, people picked on them. People told them they were going to hell. People told them all kinds of things that were negative. Uh, they were Satan worshipers, by the way. You're not. <laughs> that. Um, so they got picked on and bullied and when they got to their senior year and they told me that i cried i let them down it's my fault i wasn't bold enough to be that person for them so i made a promise to myself that from that point on there was not going to be a secret. It was going to be proud and loud and, and who I am. And I haven't thought twice about wearing, like, I have pentacle earrings that I wear and I have a pentacle necklace that I wear. Um, I have shirts with triple moon symbol on them, things of that nature. Because if another teacher can wear a cross to school, then I can wear my pentacle, right? And if another teacher can tell a student, well, I'll pray for you, then there's nothing wrong for me looking at a student and saying, I'll light a candle for you, right? Especially if that student is pagan. I want all of my little pagan babies to know that they have a teacher. They have a teacher. They have somebody that has their back and won't call them names and won't look at them and go, you know, I'm sorry, I'll pray for you so that way you'll find the right path. Because that's been said to me by teachers <laughs> that I worked with. It doesn't make me feel good, guys. You know, I know that it doesn't come from a mean place. I absolutely know that. That's, I don't ever think that it's an ill intention. But this is what I chose to believe in. And like those girls, that's what they chose to believe in. So I will absolutely have their back and I'll have any other students back that believes differently. Matter of fact, the year following that, we had a coexist club calling everybody from all different beliefs, <clears throat> excuse me, from all different beliefs to learn about each other. And that was cool, right? That was cool. So I am an advocate because of them. I'm an advocate students learn, learn about 
about everybody's belief system because you know what? If you know how people believe, you're less likely to offend them. Like guys, when you look at a witch and say she's a Satan worshiper, that's kind of that's kind of offensive. Why? Because we don't even believe in Satan. <laughs> okay. Now, if you're a Satanist, cool beans. Go for it. I've read that. It's it's awesome. I have no problem with it, right? I've also read the Bible. I spent four years in seminary. So I'm well versed well versed in different religions and this is mine this is what I chose and I wanted all the kids that grow up in pagan families to know hey it's okay you've got somebody at the school that thinks like you believes like you right and that makes kids feel better like I said in my disengagement video it's relationship building it's relationship building now I hear what you're saying okay so she doesn't want to talk to the Christian kids. False. False. <clears throat> if you ask any of my former kiddos that's Christian, and if they go through a bad spell, if they go through a bad breakup, or they have a death in the family, I look at them and I tell them, you know how your belief system believes. So pray. Pray. Do what you need to do. Ask God for healing. So I give my kids what they need, right? From what they need, not from what I need them to have, but what they need, right? And Gwyneth and Lilith, I can't thank you enough for giving me the courage to do that, to be loud and proud and help every kid that needed help. So I appreciate you girls. You know, when you give a child the ability to be comfortable in your presence, you wouldn't believe the things that you can learn. You know, just shh, don't, don't talk. Just listen, listen to them. They've got some really cool, interesting things to say. They have a new perspective on this world. Listen to them. It's kind of cool, right? They'll go, oh, you're a kid. You don't know anything. No, no, they're a kid. They're learning everything. And when you learn something, you know, you always see it differently, right? Now, funny story. Now that we, you know, we've talked about bullying and please, 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 please understand where this is coming from. Like this is my own childhood speaking about bullying. If I could go back, would I? No, that was dramatic. I don't want to deal with that anymore. So please take what I say about bullying and understanding people with beliefs that are different than yours. All right. If you get to know the person, they're kind of cool people, <laughs> just like you, we're kind of cool people. All right. Now, the funny story that I want to tell. <laughs> oh, I have a little one by the name of Ivory. I say little one because she's shorter than me and I'm like 5'4", so <laughs> I'm really short. <laughs> um, but Ivory, I adore her. She's a great kid. Had her my senior year, her senior year, my senior, senior moment. Um, <laughs> I had her her senior year and oh, they were... The class, I had given a moment to find their senior quotes because, hello, I teach yearbook, right? So I was giving them a moment to get their senior quotes together so we could put their senior quotes in the, the yearbook. And one of the guys in the class started busting out laughing. Everybody's like, what's going on? What's going on? And he just blurts it out. Can I put this one in? 18 holes and I still have time for golf? y'all first off as a teacher i am like oh yeah, i'm getting called down to the office <laughs> like, how do i prevent a kid from saying that right if you're a teacher you know you know <laughs> there's just no, sometimes there's no stopping that you just got to deal with it right so everybody busts out laughing except for ivory <laughs> ivory real confused I don't get it. And then everybody just cracks up laughing. I'm trying not to laugh at this poor child, right? I know. Okay. 
I love it. She's innocent. It's beautiful. Let's keep her that way. Right? <laughs> Let's keep her that way. And so I just looked at her and I was like, Ivory, that's a mom and dad question. You need to ask your mom and dad. And that kind of gave her the hint of, hmm? And then somebody, I can't remember who was sitting next to her, but some person sitting next to her kind of leaned over and explained the joke. And she's oh! <laughs> mortified. <laughs> absolutely mortified oh my goodness those are my favorite too and she still remembers it like she has been out of high school now i want to say six years and i still talk to her pretty much weekly still it's, it's pretty neat um and she'll bring that up she'll bring it up at least once every three months the joke because it was funny to her but again it was the comfortability they're allowed to kind of be comfortable with me. And yes, that sets me up for some of those kinds of conversations. I know that. I know that. But I teach seniors. Most of them are 17 and 18 years old. So it's not like I have second graders in the room. If I had second graders in the room, oh no, we will not open up conversations like that. We won't get too comfortable. You call me Mrs. M, right? You know, my seniors call me Mama, Ma, Mama M, <laughs> Mrs. M. I have also been called Newbuck. <laughs> so, you know, my kids get comfortable with me, and it's great. Um, you know, despite Ivory not knowing what that was, I'd like to say something about that whole situation in my classroom. As funny as it was, and we were all laughing and everything. Ivory didn't take it as us being condescending to her or bullying her. Why? Because in my classroom, we're like family. We all kind of cut up with each other, right? And because of that, I do have less instances of bullying in my classroom. Now, do I not have it? No, I do. I've, I've had situations that to be honest, were kind of hard to handle, and I still to this day don't know if I handled them right. But uh, in my classroom, for the most part, we're family. So if somebody gets upset, which happens in a family, we talk it out. Sometimes we even yell it out. <laughs> it never gets too gruff, never gets too rough. It's, I'm mad. Okay, why are you mad? Gods, they're trying to cheat. Okay. All right. I'd be mad too. What are you going to do? We'll move. Okay. Go move. <laughs> That's how it goes. Right? So this whole video about bullying, I want, I want us as people to start understanding that kindness, kindness is all we all really need. Kindness and understanding. If you don't understand how somebody believes, figure it out. Don't assume that they're bad people because they think differently than you. Figure it out. See what they believe, right? Doesn't mean you have to believe that. It just means you're expanding your knowledge. I think if we all expanded our knowledge a little bit and we were a little bit more open-minded, there'd be a lot less bullying. A lot less bullying. We just need to love each other and be kind. I know, I sound like a tree-hugging hippie. It's okay, I am a tree-hugging hippie. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, until next time, my lovelies. Be happy. Be safe. Wear your mask. Please. Wash your hands. Stay away from people. COVID's not going away anytime soon, my loves. So please do me those favors. I love you with all my heart.